welcome to the latest episode of Call to Account. Over the past nine months, there have been a number of cases in Australian courts that turn the spotlight on expert evidence, including issues relating to inherent bias, expertise and experience, and the weighting given to and the admissibility of expert evidence. However, there are two cases in particular that stand out because they go to the very heart of what we do as forensic accounting experts, objectivity, independence, and exercising due care and skill. Those two cases are Yellen Securities and Plus Architecture International and the dividend cases component of the Dick Smith litigation. Now, turning to Yellen Securities first, now here are the facts in brief. Mr J, a business valuation specialist and partner of one of the big four accounting firms, was engaged by the plaintiff to provide his opinion of the value of certain business interests. One of his employees, Mr W, contrib contributed considerably to Mr J's report. During the trial, it emerged that during the period of Mr J's engagement as an independent expert, Mr W had developed a personal relationship with Mr Yelland, a director of the plaintiff, and on four separate occasions discussed with Mr Yelland matters relevant to the litigation. The court concluded that Mr J's independence was compromised because at some point Mr W had become an advocate for the plaintiff. While the findings of the presiding judge, Justice Nicol, touched on a number of issues concerning expert evidence, my top three takeaways are these. Firstly, and, and quite obviously, the independence of the expert witness is paramount, as this ensures that the expert opinions are objective and the expert does not become an advocate for the party. And this clearly extends to the staff who assist the expert in preparing the expert report. Secondly, the factual basis and assumptions on which the opinions are formed must be set out in the report, as this allows the court to test those assumptions and weigh the expert's conclusions against its findings of fact. Opinions formed on some other unstated basis may materially taint all conclusions expressed and therefore affect the weighting the court will attribute to, to, to the totality of the expert's evidence. Thirdly, had, had the expert adopted an independent and objective reasoning process, as is required by the Expert Witness Code to Conduct, Mr J may have identified early enough and taken steps to mitigate Mr W's advocacy on the part of the plaintiff. Now that last point goes to the very heart of the pyramid model used by many accounting firms where profitability margins are maintained by leveraging more junior and less expensive staff. Given the nature of our work as experts, an inverted pyramid model is more typical, reflecting the involvement of more senior staff, their expertise and experience. In Yellen, Mr. Co the court found that Mr J was, suf was not sufficiently across the um, briefing materials with only 3.8 hours or just 3.5% of the hours charged. Now turning to Dick Smith. In the Dick Smith dividend cases, the presiding judge, Justice Ball, made adverse findings about the evidence given by the plaintiff's expert, Mr D, a partner in another Big Four accounting firm. In a similar vein to Yellen, Justice Ball's findings again reinforced the court's expectations that experts will conduct an independent and objective assessment of information relied upon for the purpose of giving expert evidence, and that failure to do so can limit the court's ability to rely on the expert's evidence. Without going into detail, Mr D's conclusions rely strongly on certain lay evidence that contain fundamental er errors, and fundamental errors such that an objective expert account ought to have identified and corrected based on the other information that was made available. Further, Mr D restated uh, month-end creditors from the company's financial month-end to a calendar month-end basis without establishing a commercially sensible basis for doing so. When taken together, Mr D's approach artificially inflated the value of month-end creditors, which in turn supported his conclusions that Dick Smith did not have sufficient funds available to pay the dividends without causing material prejudice to creditors. As the court found Mr D's evidence difficult to rely on, an objective observer might reasonably wonder whether Mr D's conclusions were reached independently on the basis of his analyses, or whether his analyses were developed to justify his conclusions. Either way, the judgment provokes interesting insight into the role that cognitive biases may play in clouding an expert's independence. So, to wrap up, both of these cases reiterate the strong messages that breaches of independence and other duties prescribed in the court's independent expert witness codes of conduct will adversely affect the extent to which the courts will admit 
or rely on the, uh, on the expert's evidence. Given the substantial costs involved in engaging expert accountants, clients can end up with a very expensive and frustrating outcome. So that's it for me. Until next time. <laughs>